independent thinkers. Don't never mention my name in a bad manner. None of y'all. The restraint that Big Sean old uh, Big Sean shows to Kanye West is remarkable because Kanye West owes Big Sean three million dollars. Kanye West gets half of Sean's profits and half of Sean's royalties. And Kanye uh, wouldn't agree to Big Sean getting his masters back from Def Jam. He just signed me straight off of just, he heard me rap and I had nothing going. So yeah, you know, my first advance was, bro, I don't even want to say the number, but it was it was, it was something where my advance, my first advance was $15,000, bro. Oh, so, God! So. That ain't last four years. No. And I had to get out that good music. I just felt uncomfortable with it. I tried to change contact with Kanye. It'd be a million times hard to get in contact with him. I never signed for this, up for that. I mean, I signed up to make sure I'm connected. And I'm writing on the album on Yandi. I'm writing on a whole bunch of shit, you know what I mean? But I wanted to make my move. I want you to check my project out. Getting out our dreams. It's a simple philosophy that one which anyone who's ever dared to step out of society's comfort zone and try to live life in the name of art will relate to. With so much backstabbing, vested interests, and fakery to ward off, the process of bringing your creativity to a wide audience, let alone monetizing it, can be an uphill battle. In 2004, Good Music was launched as a joint venture with Sony Music that came about after the college dropout proved that Kanye's unparalleled talents could sell 2.4 million units by October of that year. In typical unconventional fashion, Ye didn't launch with a hip hop release, but instead birthed the superstar with John Legend's platinum selling debut Get Lifted before he'd administer career CPR to Shy towns Common with the Gold Certified B. From then on, Ye would continue to oversee the label's release slate, veering from chart smashes by Big Sean and Kid Cudi's beloved debut to less celebrated offerings by Consequence, Malik Youssef, and Casey Hill. In other cases, artists ranging such as GLC, LA Sarah, Nigerian-born DeBange, and even the legendary tip left or remain at good with not a single project to show for it. While this must be aggravating for the artists who thought they punched the golden ticket, a little research would have informed them that good music has never been Ye's top priority. In fact, as far back as 2007, the normally self-assured Ye suggested that he regretted it. Speaking of Billboard as graduation approached, Ye explained that running a record label was the biggest mistake I ever made. I never asked to be a label owner. Sony offered it to me, but I can't be there when people are calling me to the studio to hear some music or approve clothes for a video. Later in that same cover feature, West manager G. Robertson clarified the status of good music and suggested that the plan was Kanye to no longer be the figurehead while someone else runs the day to day. Seeking to move into more of an executive producer role, Kanye found himself uncomfortably wedged into the position of chief until November of 2015 when, at long last, he passed the mantle over to former Re-Up Gang Records leader, Pusha T. Yet, where Pusha accepted the need to adapt his working methods to allow others to reap the benefits, Ye's view of the company as a burden has meant that throughout its history, even the best of intentions haven't prevented partnerships from souring beyond all recognition. Across his solo debut, My Name Is My Name, Darkest Before Dawn, and the instant classic of Daytona, Pusha T has prospered during this time at Good Music. And while some of the responsibility for any false starts or delayed albums post-2015 must technically fall on him, his retelling of his latest record's creation sheds light on how Kanye continues to pull the strings behind the scenes. A lot was going on at the time with him. And, uh, um... <laughs> You know, he's like, um, I think I can do it better. And I was like, yo, you do know that you picked all of these beats. Like, you did this. Like, you a and r this project. He was like, I know, man. The yeah. the seven song thing was a challenge because we had more. We had more that I had fallen in love with. And he hadn't fallen in love with him. He gets very selfish. Extremely. And then... 
he got hype and was like, oh, no, I'm making an album. Tiana's making an album. Like, everybody's getting an album. You know what? Nas getting an album. From demanding that they pay 85 grand for the record's controversial artwork to Pusha T since revealing that he wanted a Slick Rick sampling Cop Shot the Kid beat that Nas received, it's clear that concessions can be made when Kanye's awkwardness results in magic. But where Ye's abrupt U-turns turn Pusha T into more of a phenomenon than ever, this isn't always the case. When Kanye announced that each 2018 album featured exactly seven tracks, it seemed that he was approaching Good Music's new releases with a one-size-fits-all approach rather than tailoring it to each artist's particular vision. And while many have seen Nasir as the worst offering in the Queen's Bridges icon's entire history, the most explicitly affected party was Tiana Taylor. In the wake of think pieces on how Keep the Same Energy's fumbled release cost her a whole day of streaming, Tiana felt obligated to clear the air on Hot 97. I mean, majority of the songs were, were done when we put that date out. Uh, a lot of miscommunications as far as like, you know, clearances mm. and certain versions and, you know, like when an album dropped, I just didn't, I, I never, I didn't hear that version when an album dropped, you know what I'm saying? Like, or well, Never Would've Made It, I actually have a verse, like if you know there's only one verse on Never Would've Made It. Right. I got two whole other verses that didn't make it. I, I felt the way. Although alternate versions were promised, these attempts to smooth over things were ultimately unfulfilled. Straining the near decade long relationship between Ye and Taylor, it's telling that her follow up was created in near enough a Kanye free vacuum. Simply dubbed The Album, her brief for the project was relayed to Entertainment Weekly. Fixing what didn't work the first time, getting a better rollout, more records, longer records, just giving everybody more. Sure enough, when the album arrived, it did so with only one Ye production credit on the record's 22nd track and his verse being removed from We Got Love. Allowed to stand on her own two feet, she ended up outpacing Keep the Same Energy in almost every way and it marked her appearance in the Billboard album charts top 10 at number 8. But where Tiana stopped short of actively dissing Kanye, some of the more disgruntled voices have opted to let Ye have it over the years. Among the label's first batch of signees and Q-Tip's cousin, Consequence made his name through guest appearances on Tribe's Beats, Rhymes, and Life album before cropping back up on Ye's iconic spaceship. After dropping his debut, Don't Quit Your Day Job, to a fairly muted response, Khan decided to return to the mixtape circuit as relations between he and Ye frayed. By 2011, he was firing lyrical shots at his label's top brass and Pusha before, eventually, they parted ways and patched things up somewhere down the line. Just as Consequence had claimed to be the ghostwriter behind some of Ye's most iconic bars, Good Music's other secret weapon found himself in a position where he had to cause a disruption to get Ye's attention. Released in 2015, Saha's diss track, Elephant in the Room, featured a mock kidnapping of West and discussed his anger over being excluded from the iconic Good Complex cover. Two years on, the decision to cause a ruckus would finally pay off when Kanye executive produced his debut album, No Dope on Sundays, and it was released to critical acclaim. With Kanye notoriously quick to shift his focus, Saha's decision to protest in order to advance his career speaks to how Ye's mind works. As when you appear content, his impulsiveness will shift you out of the priorities. As a result, it seems that he's dropped more protégés than he properly nurtured. From Mr. Hudson and the Bonds to Casey Hill claiming that leaving was what I needed to do for this new music, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that taking a high risk, high reward gamble on working with good music might halt your career. Yet while Travis Scott, Kid Cudi, and to a lesser extent, 070 Shake and Valet, having proven that success can be achieved when you take the initiative. The fading fortunes of designer demonstrate what happens when you fall off a of good music's malfunctioning assembly line. 
initially brought into the world's view through Panda and Ye's Father Stretch My Hands Part 2, Pusha T signed the Brooklyn artist on the grounds that he had groundbreaking creativity. In the three years that followed on from Kanye and Push welcoming him into the fold, designers soon found out that he couldn't harness his earlier momentum and by October of 2019 was demanding that he be freed from the label. Viewed as a major fall off by many hip hop heads, the rapper's time at Good Music did little to boost his profile and in an April 2020 interview with Everyday Struggle, he spoke of his relief over escaping the label's clutches and believed that he was used as a hired hand. I had to get out that Good Music I just felt uncomfortable with. I had a couple conversations in the past between the team, but I tried to change contact with Kanye. It'd be a million times hard to get in contact with him. I never signed for this, up for that. I mean, I signed up to make sure I'm connected. When I'm writing on the album on Yandy, I'm writing on a whole bunch of shit, you know what I mean? But I wanted to make my move. I want you to check my project out. But when asked about his relationship with President Push, he said that they talked regularly, meaning that once again, in spite of Push's position, the daggers are sent Kanye's way. And if we examine how good music operates from a creative standpoint, the reason for this untimely boils down to Ye's continued role as an executive producer on most of the projects. As a result, Ye's influence and input is never that far away when it comes to major releases and neither are the pitfalls that come with working alongside such a fickle creative entity. Barring his feud with Hip Boy, who claimed that he fell out of favor with Ye after he started producing for Beyonce, one thing that Kanye has been consistently able to do is patch up these spats with his signees. Whether it's Saha, Consequence, or Cuddy, Ye and his former or current good music artists can usually find common ground once the dust settles. Now, hell-bent on making the music industry a more equitable space for artists, the news that he was returning his share of good Chinese masters proved to be the peacemaking gesture between himself and designer. But in the case of longtime label mate Big Sean, these attempts to make amends have invoked the opposite response. While he remains adamant that Ye is his brother, a recently unveiled verse on Benny the Butcher's Timeless saw the Detroit MC discuss his slave deal, claiming that he made good, great, and suggest that labels that up B's owe me M's. Then, during an appearance on a Fat Joe show, Sean revealed that being deprived of funds dates back to his early days with the label. My first advance was $15,000, bro. Everybody around me was like, oh, he signed a Kanye, he signed a Kanye, right? Bro, I'm still in the same crib that I grew up in. It was it was a moment where it was like, I didn't know if this if this was going to work out. Now. As bad as this may seem for Ye's regime, Big Sean was quick to point out that when he signed in 07, he wasn't a rapper with a hot single. So signing him was ultimately a leap of faith in the way that snapping up viral stars today simply isn't. And in this tale from Big Sean, we find the essence of what good music triumphs, failures, and fallouts all come down to. Over its history, good music has fumbled some careers while propelling others to heights that, much like Big Sean, may have never been able to reach otherwise. Left to oversee a label that he admitted to never wanting in the first place, Kanye did what he could in a role that he was ill-equipped to handle. However, his storied inability to prioritize agendas other than his own has strained relationships time and time again, leaving careers in tatters in the process. Now, five years into Pusha T's presidency, only time will tell if good music has the pedigree to go down as one of the iconic labels in history. But if they want to, it'd be wise to start scouting new talent and usher in a new era that can recapture those good Friday era glory days. This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date on everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.